Welcome into a new episode of Rays High at GW. My name is Kevin Burke, joined as always by head men's basketball coach Chris Caputo. Coach, how are you doing today? Hi, Kevin. How are you? Great. Did you have a chance to watch the Super Bowl? I did. Chance? I did. What did you think? I think the guys should have won the seven-inch uh, cleats or whatever they were saying. Everybody was slipping, and, and they thought some of the guys were wearing the five-inch. Yeah. It's like the old school uh, in basketball. Uh, wear high tops for your ankles, that, that, that type of thing. They, they kept talking about how slick the, uh, the playing surface was. Uh, but uh, I also thought, man, I didn't realize Rihanna had so many good songs. <laughs> right? It's incredible. Just kept going banger after banger. Yeah. But let, let's talk about some basketball here. Let's go back to, to last week in, our, in the Richmond home game. Double overtime victory. Yeah. Uh, too many records to, to keep track of, <laughs> but really some standout performances that yeah. we've seen time and time again. Notably, Brendan Adams, who you've talked about having a career year, just having a school record night with nine threes. Yeah, I, I mean, I knew he made some threes in the game. I didn't realize he had made nine of them. Uh, some of them from pretty deep. I was, uh, you know, uh, again, as I've said, I'm really happy for Brendan. He's a guy who's put a lot of work in and is, is really starting to see the, the fruits of his labor. And, uh, you know, we needed every bit of those uh, uh, baskets. Uh, I think our starters outscored our bench to 105 to 2, which that's got to be some sort of record as well. But we did need the two points from the bench. So. What about Brendan has made a difference this season? You've only been around him one year, but a lot of folks are saying he's such a different player this year. He's really taken his game to the next level. So take us inside his growth. What's really changed for you, you think? Yeah, you know, to be honest, I, I think he's he's played with the ball maybe a little bit more on the ball. Um, but I, I don't think this is a big surprise when, when you look at a player and his character, his work ethic, um, his seriousness of approach. Uh, and then you look at his skill set. He's in great shape. You know, this is sort of what I'm expecting from him. In fact, you know, looking at the numbers in the past, I'm like, hey, I'm a little surprised, you know. And some of that is, you know, he transferred and there's different coaching changes and things like that. But I think some stability uh, for him has been good w with our staff and, and um, his teammates. And, you know, again, I just think he's – I mean, if there's a most improved player, I mean, I would think he's, uh, he's on the list of guys. Yeah, I mean, he's got the highest scoring increase of anybody in the A-10. His shooting percentage second in the league. He's just been incredibly uh, enjoying his last season. Yeah. And it helps when you have a guy like James Bishop next to him who's put sure. up 33 and 10, sort of talking about the progression that James has gone on to be a guy that has great decision-making in that game. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, when you think about James, his reputation was that of a guy who could really score and uh, maybe even that of a volume scorer. And yet, you know, I don't know exactly how many assists he's averaging, but you know, to, to, when we're at our best, he's obviously getting six, seven assists a game. And I think at one point he was averaging about six a game. And so uh, those guys certainly get a lot of attention. And th there's a, you know, th there's a heavy burden on those guys uh, every night to, to play well. And for the most part, they've answered the call. And if you want to call it the undercard, you have Maximus <laughs> Edwards, who you've been singing his praises, should have been winning a bunch of Rookie of the Weeks. Well, now he's won four of them. First time for a GW player since 2000. Yeah. And he tied the school record for rebounds for a guard, uh, yeah. nonetheless, against Richmond. Yeah, it was incredible, you know, rebounding game. He really goes after the ball, 15 rebounds. It's funny, we had a, a funny line the other day and uh, said something to uh, Ricky and Max about rebounding. And Ricky said, well, I block out. And uh, Max just goes and gets the ball, you know, <laughs> which is... You know, it's, it's good to have block out guys and rebounding guys. If you can be both, that's great as well. Absolutely. Well, as we turn our attention, there's only two or three weeks here until the 810 tournament. Hard to believe the, the, the field is a mess right now. Two through <laughs> 11. Everybody's right up next to each other. You've said it. Every game is big. What about this mentality coming down the home stretch here? Well, I think it's a good, so it's a good place to be in terms of uh, when you feel like you're really playing for something um, and you're in in contention you know, for, you know, maybe maybe a, a double buy, a uh, single buy, you would hope. Uh, and yet everyone that you're playing against is sort of in that same situation where uh, these games matter. And that's that's what's great about college basketball is the regular seasons is a very important thing. And, and uh, I think our guys are enjoying being in the fight. Yeah, you've talked about it, that it's good to have big games at this point of the yeah. season, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think, again, I think almost every game we play is going to be monumental for for where we're at as it relates to going to Brooklyn. And we look at ahead tomorrow on USA, St. Bonaventure, a team you haven't seen this season, a team you haven't seen at GW. None of these guys have seen them because we haven't played them in three years. What, played what, them in three, I didn't know that. Yeah, a know. couple COVID cancellations. We haven't seen St. Bonaventure on the schedule since the that. end of 2020, which is crazy, but yeah. they're always a tough uh, Yeah, game. I mean, obviously great respect for Coach Schmidt and the job he's done. They've been really one of the most consistent teams in the league over his time there. Uh, a, a tremendous fan base. Uh, and, and sort of environment at the Riley Center. 
I, uh, I was fortunate enough to, to coach there, George Mason, and uh, we won by 39 points. That Dang. was before Coach Smith, but I don't, I don't think that's what the game will look like <laughs> this weekend. Uh, but, um, you know, excited to play in a, in a, in a historic, you know, great uh, environment, alma mater of my good friend, Adrian Wojnarowski. So it's the one game that the, the Woj family will be rooting against GW, <laughs> which is okay. Uh, but but we you know he'll have to put his GW shirt away for for, for Sunday. He'll have a win one way or another. Yeah, uh, depending exactly. on what happens tomorrow. Yeah. Coach, appreciate the time as always. We'll Thanks, talk in a couple weeks. Yep, we'll see it. All right, coming up on Race High at GW, we talk with GW softball head coach Christy Schoonmaker. That's next. Seriously, like have you seen my silhouette? Sheesh. It's giving me character energy. Like grab the bag and start to fail. Our best flavors just get better. Truly hard seltzer. Welcome back to Race High at GW. Joined now by the head coach of the GW softball program in her second season, Chrissy Schoonmaker. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself, Kevin? I'm great. Happy to be here with you. And I'm actually going to start a little bit off topic, not softball, uh, but it is about your team and how you guys have been able to support a bunch of the teams here on campus, most notably men's and women's basketball. You guys are always out there. I'm sure you guys have seen women's basketball's home winning streak. And just can you talk about how important it is to have your team out here supporting other teams on campus? Sure, we have. Caroline and I have a great relationship. Um, really excited for their success. Obviously, we're super excited for Co Coach Caputo's success with the men's side. Um, I think it's really invaluable when you can see other student athletes in the stands supporting you, other coaches. They know what you're going through. They're, you, you just feel like you're supported and it gives you that extra push when you need it. So we, we try to do that because other, other teams are doing that for us as well. And through the miracle of television, you guys are actually in South Carolina right now, so you won't be able to support them on senior day today. But you know that uh, you know they've won five in a row at home. The women's team has, so they've been able to use that uh, benefit, and you guys have used that as well on your home turf. We have. We're, they're rolling. We're excited to watch their, their surge through the postseason. Uh, Caroline and I text quite a bit pregame and just really excited to get see, to see the growth of their program and their continued success. And a, a basketball tangent here, uh, if you mind. Uh, yeah, South Carolina, your alum, <laughs> number one yeah. women's team in the country. You actually have a great relationship with their head women's basketball coach, Don Staley. I do. Uh, so Don and I, I'm a South Carolina alum. Don and I became friends when she took the job and really our, our relationship and our friendship expanded upon during COVID. You couldn't do a lot, uh, but you could go on a lot of walks. So I spent uh, almost every day walking uh, with her and the head softball coach at South Carolina and talking about game strategy, about leadership, about mentorship, and just spent a lot of time uh, with the two of them. And they really took a vested interest in my growth. They helped prepare me for head coaching interviews and, and whatnot. But Don's a great friend of mine. We're in a group a group thread called the the crew um, so we we get a text from each other almost every game just wishing each other luck she was one of the first people that reached out when we won the a10 championship last year and uh, just really grateful to, for her presence in my life uh, can you put in context like perhaps a greatest lesson you've learned from her because she's somebody that's winning nonstop and is one of the greatest women's basketball coaches or just coaches in general of all time yeah i think there's two things one she leads authentically with who she is she is dawn staley through and through every day she's going to show up the way she is and just lead from her heart um, the second thing is she talks a lot about discipline matters and it's something that she talks about in your daily routine discipline matters and how you go about your business discipline matters and there's times when i'm maybe having a conversation with a player or just even in my own routines, right? Like discipline matters, the way you show up, like continue to be disciplined um, and create good habits. But those are two of the, probably the biggest lessons I've learned from her. And we saw that come to fruition last year with an A-10 regular season title. And as we transition to this year, you got two wins in your opening weekend, but so did the weather, uh, you know, getting two yeah. games knocked out in your first term. And talk about the first weekend and, and battling through some adversity with weather-wise. Well, February is not spring. Uh, I say that all the time. Our coaches association says that. And, you know, we're playing before Major League Baseball has started. So I think the weather is going to be a factor um, in, in potentially losing some games, but we never let it be a factor within our team. We addressed it right away. 
it's raining for the other team, it's going to be raining for us. And the two things that we talk about within our group are champions adjust and talent is flexible. So regardless of the weather, the temperature, we're going to be prepared to go out there and fight. Of the three games you did get in, any mm -hmm. lessons you can take from or anything that stood out to you? Oh, our, I loved our fight in, you know, our, our first two games, we were down uh, in the seventh inning in both games. One of them we won it on a walk off and the second one we came back and we're in a position to win. Uh, we, we lost three to two to Maine, but I thought we were in a great position to win and we were being down 3-0 to come back and really fight uh, to the last out was something that I was super proud of and I loved that growth from our group. And, and tell us a little bit about your opening day starter, first year Rose Cano. Yeah. Big shoes to fill on the mound with Sierra Lang now on your coaching staff, but sure. uh, you know, big first year uh, for her to start. Yeah, so Rose has had, had an incredible start. She is, was a top 100 recruit, played for one of the best summer ball teams in the country uh, in Batbuster Stiff. Um, Rose is a competitor uh, through and through. She holds herself to high standards. She wants to be held to high standards by our coaching staff. Uh, she's actually had the conversation with me asking for that. Uh, she's fierce, she's stoic. You're gonna watch her compete and you're never gonna know she's a rookie. Uh, and that's something that's really great. But she had a great presence on the mound. I thought she commanded the zone. Uh, she had great at-bats as well. But we're, we're excited to, to have her on our roster. And I would tell you to look for a, a great career from Rose Cano. And if there's somebody that can hold her to high standards, it's Sierra Lang, who's now <laughs> on your staff, who reset yeah. the record book here for, uh, for GW. But what's sure. it like to have her on staff now this season? That's it's, gotta be unique. It's incredible. Sierra is invaluable to our staff. I tell her all the time. I call her all American any chance I get. Uh, she is humble enough to ask me to stop, but I think she deserves her flowers. And uh, we the ability, the fact that we have the ability to get all American BP uh, from the mound, our hitters see all American arm circles every day is huge. Uh, but Sierra being so close in age to our players, I think they understand that she's been there. She knows what it's like. She can see maybe if they're struggling mentally or, hey, you know, they're, they're not bouncing back maybe how we would want them to. And you'll see her having just some sidebar conversations and pouring into our, our younger student athletes, especially with six rookies on our roster. But Sierra's presence on every side of the ball is invaluable, and I'm so glad she's chosen to be a part of our staff. You mentioned All-American batting practice. Usually batting <laughs> practice is the easier part, but now it's sort of like the inverse, right? Where like you're getting as good of what you're going to see in a game in practice. It's got to help down the line. It certainly helps. They get their feel-good BP from me. <laughs> I call myself Dr. Feel-Good because I try to hit their barrels, and Sierra is certainly trying to elevate them with mix of speeds and spin, but she's, she's certainly helping our batters every time she gets in the circle. And you talked about how there are a bunch of new players on your team. You got some rookies, but you also have a graduate transfer who is a familiar name to our GW bas uh, baseball head coach, Greg Ritchie. His daughter, Arizona Ritchie, led off for you, played shortstop, came over yeah. from UVA. Talk about her importance to this team. Uh, Arizona is an invaluable member of our team. Every player is. Arizona offers us leadership. She offers us experience. Uh, she really is the quarterback of our infield. I'd say that our middle infielders are the quarterbacks, and she does a great job commanding you know, playing the game the right way. She's been trained at a high level. She's been competing at a high level for the last four years in the Power Five at UVA. Uh, there's moments as a leader where maybe I'm talking to our third baseman about a play and I'll look over in Arizona is talking to our second baseman who's a rookie about her footwork and how to put a tag down. And it's like we have another coach on our infield. So she's just been, she's a joy to coach and she's, uh, we're so glad she's here. That's awesome to hear. And let's, let's talk more about your team in that uh, there's a bunch of familiar faces, a, a lot of departures from last season, but who's somebody or someone, some group that uh, you're looking to take a huge leap this season? Yeah, I would say there's two that really stand out. Abby Schaub uh, caught probably half of our games last season and she had her first career home run in, in game three for us this past weekend. And I think you'll see a surge in offensive production from her. She's really been barreling the ball up, seeing the ball well in batting practice. And then Sydney Torres, uh, who will play some outfield for us. Uh, is anchoring kind of in the, ba the bottom half of our order, but she offers a little bit of punch there, and she also had her first career home run. And I think from the two of them, you're going to see their numbers continue to rise. And this team coming off an A-10 regular season championship, we just saw it in the Super Bowl where the Chiefs are one of the top teams, and they used it as motivation that nobody picked them this season. Well, GW didn't get picked to win the A-10 this year. Do you guys use that as motivation? You're still up at the top, but is there a little motivation of, hey, we'd like a little more respect? Sure, it's something that I certainly addressed with our team because they came into practice with a little bit of an edge on their shoulder. And I told them the edge on their shoulder is good, the chip on their shoulder is good. It's knowing how to channel that edge. And I have told our group I'm very, I'm, I'm not focused at all on where we start. I'm very focused on where we finish. So I want our team to be prepared to grow, to learn, we're going to have challenges through the year, but you know, preseason rankings don't matter in May, and this group is really focused on where we want to be at the end of the year. 
And by that time, it'll be spring and almost summer and not <laughs> playing outside in February. So, yeah. <laughs> Coach, we wish you the best of luck, and we'll talk to you again soon. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. All right, coming up on the next segment here of Race IGW, Arizona Richie's father, Greg Ritchie, the head coach of the baseball program, joins us. That's next. Raise high. This isn't just our battle cry. It's our call, our challenge. Because when you were called to Washington, you were called to higher expectations, to a higher standard. We are called here to advance knowledge, to serve society, to change the world. This is the George Washington University, and what we make is history. So stand up, be bold, take risks, press on, push harder, raise high. Make your trip monumental. Sightsee through DC without overspending on gas and ride shares. Experience DC the local way. Ride, save, explore. Metro. Welcome back to Ray's High at GW. I am Julian Coultry, and the weather is getting warmer, which means it is time for baseball season. I have the absolute pleasure to be joined by the head coach of the George Washington baseball team, Greg Ritchie. Coach, it is an absolute pleasure of mine to have you on the program. It's an honor to be here today. Thanks for having me, Julian. Yeah, great to see you. You know, you just said it to me off camera. The jitters are starting to get in here. It's time to get ready for baseball season, and you have a special connection to this program. I mean, you really look at your resume and it bleeds buff and blue. You are an alumni of the school. You played on the baseball team. You met your spouse here. Now you're in your 11th season as a head coach and you have children who play and have attended GW, including your daughter, Arizona, who, as we just mentioned, you heard Kevin talk about is on the base, uh, on the softball team. Talk about what GW means to you. GW is, is, is just the, the most amazing and special place for our family. Um, you know, I met my wife here, um, and she was on the rowing, row, men's rowing team. And as you as you said, we have uh, our kids here. Um, I played here, I coached here. I I do have buff and blue in my soul and in my blood, and it's just a it's just a wonderful place to be. And I think GW is just a, a unique place within itself. And I'm really proud and honored to be here in in terms of being the head coach here. Last week, you had a chance to go to the GW Hall of Fame ceremony, induct a, a former alumnus of the team, Danny Rurier. One of the things that he talked about during the ceremony that really stuck out to me was not his stats or playing in the games, but it was about family. It was about those bus ride trips. It was about being together with the, the men of the program as the head coach and obviously a former player yourself here at GW. What did it mean to you? Uh, you know, as Danny was talking, it, it made me – think back on all the special moments and I think he's 100% correct and I think a lot of our, our inductees that night um, really went in that direction in terms of what um, their experience at GW meant to them and what an honor it is to be a, a part of the athletic program here and and what every season meant to them and I started thinking about guys that I, I played with and just the silly moments um, the bus rides the van rides playing at the ellipse and just having different things happen um, and just hanging out together. Um, big victories, those are always great because you're like, yeah, we did something really special with a big victory. But the thing that mounts up year after year is, is how that bond and that relationship is lifelong. And I still continue to talk to, as Danny had alluded to, talk to every player, even three, four years in front of me, in front of me and behind me. Yeah. And it's, it's just a beautiful thing, and I think he's 100% correct. That's the most important thing. It's not the big championship so much, that, but that's great. But it is the every day with every, with every guy you're with and everybody you meet, the relationships. You've had a chance to not only develop those relationships as a player, but you're now entering your 11th season as the head coach of the GW baseball team. In fact, entering this year, 251 career wins. That is only 24 shy of the all-time mark, which Tom Walters currently holds at 275. When you think back of coming back to your alma mater and, and taking over as the head coach and now 11 years and, and approaching that number, just what do you think about? 
Well, first of all, I, you, know, you mentioned you know some of the former coaches and some of the former players. But when you mentioned Tom Walter, I will have to say that is just one one terrific um, human being of high character to establish the record he he has established here at GW. Um, he had a career here second to none almost, um, and you know all his coaches know this. It, it's it's not the W's that you get in terms of the total number. Accolades are fantastic. They're they're nice little caveats to get and win and do that but it's it's really all the people that produce that it's every coach I've had here in my time it's every player we've had here um, and I hope we go far beyond that number this year I mean that's more important to me than than the 24 more wins uh, the championship and a big fat W at the end of the season is is the one you really want to get yeah, well you're gonna have to pick up the wins to not only get the record but have a chance to to get that W and something we're super excited to see. Let's talk about the team who's going to be doing on the field because when I got the GW, the first thing that I learned is a Greg Ritchie team knows how to hit the ball. <laughs> and during my first year covering the team, I definitely experienced that. And a lot of those guys last year are coming back. Anthony Vachette behind the plate. He had a career year last year. Steve DiTomaso, maybe one of the best hitters in the country. Noah Levine, former All-Atlantic 10 second teamer. He returns. You also have some young guys like Ty Acker and Tim Nicholson looking to make that jump, Logan Lexel uh, as well in the outfield. What do you expect from the offense? I expect the offense to be as relentless as we always are. Um, there's really a theme to the offense, which is which is reach the potential of having really good barrel control, put the ball in play hard and firm, and, and taking the appropriate at-bats so you have good misses and make good outs. Yeah. If that continues one after the other and we don't break the chain, then we end up having these career seasons uh, like Anthony Frechette stepping into the four hole last year with an injury situation. He jumps from the eight hole to the four hole and has a career year. Um, so we do have a lot of returning bats that have had experience and success from, from Frechette to Levine to Di Tommaso, who, you, I mean, this guy's a scrapper. Yep, absolutely. He finds a way to get it done every single time. Um, you have Nicholson coming back. You have Ty Acker, who had a nice freshman year last year. Eddie Micheletti. And you have Eddie Micheletti. Um, who is a nice, nice, nice potential power bat down the road and developing. And in particular, I'm real excited also to get a player back named Sam Gates, yeah. who reminds me of some players that, that have had really good success at the college and pro level and reminds me of some of those guys and how he plays this game. And, and he's come back with sheer determination from an, an injury that stopped the, his season at the beginning. And he's going to be a vital piece to us uh, toward the top of the lineup. Julian, along with along with our offensive, our returning guys is a real big core of our team. We have a, we have some some guys coming in, newcomers that are going to really bolster this offense. Um, those guys being Brett Young, Robbie Wacker, uh, Michael Cohen, and um, Brian Bello. Um, so those would be really good bats for us to really solidify the entire offense and and back our pitchers really well. Greg, speaking of pitchers, let's talk a little bit about what you're going to have on the mound this year. Nice combination of returners from last season, as well as some new faces, just like what you mentioned in the lineup. Talk a little bit. Julian, that's, that. That, Julian that's exactly right. Uh, we have a very diversified pitching staff with eight left-handers and 10 right-handers. And we have the likes of all our you know, successful experienced returners of, of Chris Knight and, and, and Wilson and Kaler and Coster. Connor Harris. Connor Harris, uh, Richie Fluger, and, and, but we have some really nice looking freshmen. Uh, in particular, we have some righties and lefties out of that group too, a good mix. And we have some experience coming in from those newcomers like an, like an Austin Odell, and in particular, a, a guy that's a mid-year transfer from, from Duke, which, was, which is Michael Foltz. And, and these guys are all gonna be a really big part of, of the pitching staff that, that I feel is going to work the zone, find the zone, and, and we're going to have a good diversity to back each other up and, and have, a, have a nice year with this pitching staff. So I'm very excited about both the offense and the defense and the pitching staff. Um, I think we're, we're even uh, stronger this year than, than in years past. Last question for you, and we'll make it a quick one. You have your opening weekend at the Tuck coming up where you guys will be uh, taking on uh, Wednesday the 22nd for the home opener. What does it mean to go see a game of the Tuck? What's the experience like? The Tuck is absolutely one of the better venues on this coast, in this area. It is, it is an atmosphere that is going to be loud in terms of our players and, and the fans wanting to go out there and have a fun, fun time. 
and you're going to be able to see lots of things in the tuck because it's an open venue where you can get different angles at different parts of the stadium and it's a beautiful venue it's a beautiful beautiful high high level facility um, and we're very very proud of it and our guys are going to be those guys you're going to going to say hey i love watching these guys play they play hard they play hard they play tough they play fast yeah absolutely tucker field at barcroft park it's in arlington come out to a game it, it really you can't stress it enough an unbelievable time. Greg, Thank thanks you, for joining the program. Appreciate Always it. a pleasure. That's going to do it for us here at Raise High at GW, whether it's at the Tuck, whether it's here at the Charles E. Smith Center, whether it's over at the Vern, wherever it is, we're looking forward to seeing you at a game. We'll catch you later.